Hey, Razor fans! All right, we're going to continue our tough guy series, and uh, this guy's the toughest of the tough in my book. Uh, if you were a USAC fan in the 60s and 70s, you know who he is, Lee Koonsman. Uh, if you're a race fan in the last 30 years, you knew he was the team manager in Helmogon Racing. But to watch this guy race in the early 70s in a sprint car or a midget was uh, pretty much a thing of beauty. This guy, Lee, was one of the uh, he was one of the up and coming stars. Won his very first USAC midget race. Was fast at Sale in Winchester right off the bat. Here he is after winning the Astrodome midget race. Um, Sky was the limit. Where was this guy going to be? Here he is in Doc Dunn's car after winning a feature. 1970, he's running a sprint car in Odessa, Missouri. The throttle sticks. He goes out of the ballpark, gets caught up in the fence, breaks his neck, his arm, his wrist, uh, gets horribly burned. Um, and here he is after his, this is after his plastic surgery. And you can see that he certainly had some horrible burns around the face and the eyes. But the great thing about Koonsman is, uh, was that spirit. So he gets he gets burned and gets hurt really bad in June of 1970. In June of 1971, he decides he's ready to come back to USAC. But USAC says, no, you're not ready. You're still rehabbing. You can't. You're not walking. Your left arm's almost useless because it's still so weak. You look like the fan of the opera in the face because your your burns haven't healed. So they 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 decline to give him a license. Well, Koonsman borrows a helmet from Chuck Gurney, qualifies his midget. And of course, in typical Cinderella fashion, wins the feature. Yep, wins his first race back a year after being almost killed in the sprint car. The great story is, after he takes a checkered flag, he's so weak, he can't get the car out of gear and almost runs over a USAC official at the start finish line, which isn't a bad thing if you're a USAC member. But uh, he's so weak, he can't get his helmet off. So two or three guys pry his helmet off, and the USAC officials are standing there with you know, their, their mouths drop open because the guy they wouldn't give a license to has just won the feature. Obviously, he got his license. Koonsman's own words were, I was quite a sight to see. He said, my eyes were all bugged out because my eyebrows were gone and my eyes were open all the time anyway because of the way the scar tissue was healing. I had no nose and my lip was hanging off. He said, but it sure felt good to be back in victory lane. Typical Koonsman, he starts winning midget and sprint car races again. Gets a couple indie rides. Not real good indie rides, but middle of the Packers. And then in 1974, he finally gets a break. He's driving for Bob Fletcher's Cobra Firestone team. One of the best cars. It's a Dan Gurney Eagle. Koonsman's in the front row at Texas with Mario Andretti, and we're thinking, the guy's finally going to make it. Where he sh he's finally at the top where he should be in an Indy car, and he is going to kick everybody's butt. Well, December of 1974, he's tire tested on Ontario Motor Speedway. Something breaks. He crashes. He dies. They have to bring him back to life. He's in and out of the hospital and the rehab center for a year and a half, learning how to walk and talk and read and write again. And we figured, he's lucky to be alive, we'll never see him in a race car again. Wrong. He's back at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I think he finished 7th in 1977, and not a very good car. In 1979, he almost wins the Atlanta race against Johnny Rutherford and Rick Mears, going 200 miles an hour, finished the second by about a half a car length. He tried to make Indy one more time in the early 80s, didn't, became team manager for Ron Himmelgarn. And, uh... I'm just lucky enough to tell you that I eat lunch with this guy every Friday. And yeah, he's put on some weight, and sometimes salad flies out of his mouth, and he's had a couple heart seizures, and we had to revive him the other, you know, last summer during lunch. But through all the things that have happened to Lee Koonsman, I've never heard him bitch or complain about my, his bad luck or what would have happened if this would have happened. If, if I'd have just got a break like this guy, he's never complained. He's never feel sorry for himself. He's just, he's such a class act, and he's such a fun guy, and he's always... He's always making fun of himself, saying, you know, I'm a crispy critter just like Rick Gowdy and Merle Bettenhausen, the original crispy critter group. And every now and then we'll talk about, it's, it's Poncho Carter and Steve Stapp and Merle Bettenhausen and, and Gary Irvin and Steve Chassie and Bubby Jones and Tim Coffey and all the boys at lunch. We're always talking about the good old days. And every now and then Koonsman will talk about himself if you prompt him. Yeah, I wasn't bad in a sprint car. I had some success. I was a, but he'll never, he's, he's, he's just so humble. But uh, I can tell you this, he's in the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. But if there was a People Hall of Fame, he'd get my vote because he's the toughest of the tough. And uh, it's just an honor to call him a friend. So enjoy 2015. We'll continue our series next week. This is Robin Miller for Racers.